<laughs> All right, everybody, my name's Mark. Welcome to 2000 Hours of Banjo. As you can see, as I'm working through the 10 ways to play back up, I'm kind of stuck back at way number three uh, because I am working on that shifting of how I was fretting the D chord from this to this. I have been practicing or using the um, what I'm calling the dry fretting technique that one of you guys mentioned, which is just to sit there with my banjo and go back and forth with the fretting positions or forms um, without striking any of the strings with my right hand. I think that has been helping, but it's gonna, it's gonna take a little bit still to reverse that. Another issue um, that I was having kind of with the same problem where I was like this is this is supposed to be a D chord and the proper D chord would be this because the full form of the D chord is that if I'm if this is the D chord if I've got this mixed up with the F chord or something like that that's fine I want to say this is is this is this F and that's D anyway this shape whatever this shape is I'm pretty sure it's D um, I was kind of doing the same thing on another song and I've been doing this for over a year and that's Cumberland Gap. With Cumberland Gap, where am I at? <laughs> right there. I think that's supposed to be an E minor, if I'm correct. The shape for an E minor is this, not, not, <laughs> I guess that so the proper way to fret that e minor is to use this finger my instructor has asked me to go ahead and make the full shape just for the sake of practice because i am still a beginner student and that has thrown so much off just that small change from fretting the, the number one string fret two with the middle finger to the number one string fret two with the um, ring finger and then placing the mid middle finger on fret four it it just it throws every I've been working on it earlier today let's see if I can do it nope <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a year's worth of work. I'm going to have to go back and work on that and relearn it. So kind of a bummer, but all for the sake of the better good and the better me in the future, hopefully. As you can tell, we're back up at the cabin. It is freezing outside, so I'm inside next to the fire. The lighting's not so good in this particular position, so bear with it. It's going to be kind of a dark-ish video. Um, where are we at? I want to say we're at 387. I'll do the math uh, and correct myself if I'm wrong, but I believe we're at 387 hours today. So we're really getting close to the 400 hour mark, which would be awesome because 400 hours marks, what is that? A fifth of the way to 2000 hours. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm not going to go through everything today as far as checking where I'm at, but I do want to finish the rest of the 10 ways of playing back up again, that mic heading material, uh, and comment on a couple other things. Now, I did mention that I was doing what I was called the dry fretting, which was a tip from one of you guys in the comments to do that. I'm going to continue doing that because I think it is helping. 
another one of you commented, I was, I was mentioning that I do like to put in, if I can, two hours of practice on the weekends if I don't have a bunch of chores going on. Uh, and one of you mentioned to split it up uh, one hour towards the morning, one hour towards the evening. I am doing that. And I think that's actually pretty helpful. So I can, it actually spaces stuff out, um, like almost like a, two different categories. I can spend an hour in the morning working on speed drills on older material and then work in the evening an hour on new stuff, especially, um, and new includes imp new improvements to old uh, material, just the fretting particularly. Um, the other thing was, oh, there was this section that my, um, my instructor told me about called over, it, it, it's, a, it's a portion of one of the backups of, of the one of 10 backups. And it's so on that last note, when I'm using my thumb to strike the um, the third string, uh, he told me before I before I strike it to get my fingers off off these strings off the frets, and he mentioned it. It's due to overtone, it sounds different. His hearing, the way he picks up stuff is much more sensitive. I don't hear a difference at this point in my banjo career, but he does. And he mentioned that it's an overtone. I'm not exactly sure. I had him there and I just nodded in my head like, okay, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Without asking him what an overtone is. I, I mean, I pay the guy, I might as well ask him to define some of these terms for me. I believe an overtone means like when I strike a string, some of the other strings vibrate and add to the sound of that string. And if I'm fretting it, it, it makes a different sound. I know that this was something that Eli Gilbert mentioned when, uh, and I'm rolling up my sleeve for this, when doing the um, fretting for the vamping, he said to use the palm of the hand to kind of snuff out the fifth string so it doesn't vibrate when you vamp. Right, I'm gonna get into position here. Now let me get my palm off of that fifth string and retry it. I can definitely hear that fifth string ringing. Yeah, it's ringing. So maybe I think that's what he meant by overtone. I don't remember if Eli Gilbert called it an overtone. I can go back and look at that material in his YouTube video. Um, what else am I trying? Oh, uh, one of you guys mentioned as far as uh, when I'm moving up and down the neck, uh, there's two places where I'm doing that, one on Cumberland Gap and one in Manson, Manaconsasaro, to kind of lead with my eyes. And that has been helping a lot. So I can't remember which one of you that said that, but thank you for that, because that is a great tip. And what I mean by that is when I'm doing um, Man of Constant Sorrow, there is a section. Oops. And that section is really tricky, especially if you're not looking. So now I am intentionally exaggerating the movement, but... And actually, since my finger is here and I'm not moving it, I don't need to really look up there for that. So as soon as I start this section of the song, I can go ahead and look where I want my finger to go next. So I'm trying, I'm really trying to get my eyes to lock into the position where my finger needs to go next. And I think that's been helping a lot. So again, thank you a whole bunch for that tip. Uh, what else did I want to go over? Vamping. I think that's about it. So let me just demo some of the, the rest of the 10 ways. I'm up to five as far as ways to play backup. And then we'll call it a video for today. Um, let me see. Nope. 
bad, really bad. I told you, I'm, I just had a string of these really bad practices of late, but I'm sure it's just a kind of a, a, a hump I need to get over, and I'm sure next week I'll pick up right where I was. <laughs> That wasn't too bad. Already improving. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. I've got some practice to do. I will see you in a probably about 10 hours.